On top of looking at the simple case of a single spring, the Lascelles Hooke's Law apparatus also lets you look at combinations of springs, such as two springs in parallel, three springs in parallel, two springs in series, and lastly, three springs in series. Now this gives this apparatus a little bit more oomph and it means that it's perfect for those more in-depth investigations on the spring constant. And it's also perfect if you've got a mixed ability class where you've got some students that finish ahead of others and this little extra activity is gonna keep them occupied. So let's start with springs in parallel. So here we've got three different springs, each with spring constants K1, K2 and K3 respectively. So if we were to work out what the effective spring constant is, which is like the combined spring constant of all these springs working together, it would be K effective is K1 plus K2 plus K3 and so on for as many springs as we add. Now we can test this with the Lascelles apparatus. So let's go and grab some data and see if we can prove it. So you can see that I've started here with two springs in parallel, and you can see that I've put them in rungs one and three. And this is to make sure that the force is gonna be exerted evenly rather than like off center and it comes down at an angle. So I need to move my scale up so that it's zeroed. And remember that needs to fit inside of the scale. So I'll just run this to the top. Here we go. So now again, I'm ready to add my masses and start collecting data. So the mass limit for this setup is 400 grams. So I'm gonna go from zero to 450 gram increments and collect my data set. So for the first point, I am going to add 50 grams. And then my extension reads 1.6 centimeters. So that's my first data point. So now I'm gonna speed through the rest of them and collect that data set. So here's my data set for Hooke's Law with two springs in parallel. So I've got my mass in grams in column A, my extension in centimetres in column B. So first off, I need to convert everything into SI units. So to get from grams into kilos, I need to divide the mass in grams by 1,000. To get my extension in metres, I need to divide my extension in centimetres by 100. And I can copy these down. And then for my graph, I need to be plotting force instead of mass. So the equation is F equals mg. So I'm going to need my mass in kilos times by g, which is 9.81. And then I can drag that down. And then for my plot, I want uh, force on the y-axis against extension on the x. I can go insert, scatter plot. Oh, it looks lovely. So let's label it up so we can remember what we've plotted. Get rid of that. So on the x-axis, we have got extension in meters. On the y-axis, we've got force in newtons. And let's go hook two springs in parallel. So now we can apply our linear fit to the data by right-clicking on the data set click our trend line and then display equation on chart. So that gives us a total effective spring constant of 31.337. So from our graph, we have worked out that K, uh, F, so the effective spring constant is 31.337. And that's for two springs. So we know that is equal to K1 plus K2. Now we are using two springs, which are exactly the same. They've got exactly the same spring constant. So we can simplify that to two lots of Ki, where I is either one or two. Um, so then to get Ki on its own, uh, we just have to do K effective all over two. So divide that number by two to get 15.669. Um, and that is super close to the value that we got for the spring. Uh, in the last video, it's like a couple of hundredths off. So we have proven that this relationship is accurate. So you can do exactly the same thing for three springs in parallel. The treatment will be exactly the same, but when you get to this stage, you'll need to divide it by three instead. I'm gonna skip that part and move to springs in series. Here we've got two springs, uh, spring one and spring two, with spring constants K1 and K2 respectively. 
Now this time the formula for the effective spring constant is 1 over k effective equals 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. So it's essentially the same as before but just the reciprocal of. Again let's go and test this with the equipment and see what we get. So I am going to take two springs and hook them together and then I'm going to suspend them from the middle hook in the apparatus and attach the mass suspension bracket. Also on the middle hook, I'm going to slot it inside the measurement slide and bring it down so it's zeroed. And again, I am ready to start adding my masses. So the mass limit for this setup is back to 100 grams. So I am back to using this tiny little mass and hanger set. Uh, I'm going to go from 0 to 90 grams in 10 gram increments. So let's get some data. So here we are with the data set for two springs in series for Hooke's Law. Um, so I've got my mass in grams in column A, extension in centimetres in column B. Let's convert everything into SI units like before. So I'm just going to do the conversions. Drag them down. Work out what my force is from my mass. Oh, if my PC can catch up. And again, I want to plot force on the y-axis against extension on the x. Oh, something terrible's happened on the last one. What's gone on there? Ah, I've written, I've done a typo. It wasn't 10.3, it was 11.3. Much better. <laughs> right. So let's put some axis labels on. Where's that again? Here we go. We've plotted an extension meters, force in newtons. So now I can add my trend line and it is giving me a total effective spring constant of 7, let me write this down, 7.8454. So let's go back to the whiteboard and work out what it thinks our spring constant is. So let's start by making the right hand side more simple. So we know that we've got two of exactly the same springs, they've got the same spring constant. Um, and to add fractions together, we know that the denominators need to be the same. So we can simply add across the top to get two and put it all over the same denominator. So one over kf is equal to two over ki. Now, if I times this up here and that up there, we can see that ki is equal to two lots of kf. Now from our graph, we know that Kf was uh, 7.8454. So if we times that by two, we get six, sorry, 15.69, which again is super, super close to the value that we got for the spring on its own. Um, and that makes for a very, very happy physicist. Thanks for watching.